How do you physically feel when you channel? Like, I'm just curious. I don't physically feel anything. Feel anything. Okay. I'm kind of, I'm, you know, again, I'm here, but I'm not here. And I, I guess I'm just not thinking about that. Um, so I don't have a, a, a physical feeling that's different than, well, I'll take that back though, because I do have the energy that runs through me, but that's kind of already happening before I get into the, the channeling mode. And that is an energy that um, starts at the base of my spine and it shoots up into my head. Okay. And then I know when I'm in gear, you ask me that question, I'm like, well, I do feel something different. <laughs> um, and it, I can feel this tingling in my nose and up between my eyes. And, you know, a lot of people talk about the third eye or the pineal gland, and I'm, I'm assuming that that's got something to do with that. When I first started doing this, I used to feel a lot in my left jaw down through my neck. And I kind of felt like that was my signal that, hey, something's trying to speak through me. And once I listened to Abraham, I understood what that was. And I, I used to record these, and I, I doubt that I'll ever share them because you probably think I'm possessed or something. But I was trying, it was, it was trying to speak through me. And then once I realized that I can speak for them and there can be kind of a collaboration that I'm getting these downloads of thought and I can speak and stay in the gear and I'm speaking purely what they're giving me, that all stopped. It was just like some kind of a sign, I guess. You know, we manifest all of these things that the way we need to see them so that um, you know, they're just tools. Everything's a tool. Yeah. And everything has the power that you give to it. I've definitely learned that. So, you know, that was just something that, that I needed to do in my process to get to where I could do this. So, and then what was your process to get to that point, like this continuous meditation practice? Well, the, when I first started okay. meditating, I had this very powerful um, awakening that I don't think everybody necessarily experiences as quickly as I did, for whatever reason, probably because I suppressed it for so long, I don't know. But that's when I had this, this feeling of this energy, and people refer to it as kundalini energy mm -hmm. that flows. And I think, I absolutely think everybody has access to that. Mm -hmm. And you know that is your body connecting deeper with your higher self. And <clears throat> I had that you know, years ago, I think it was 2010, that I had that experience. And it was pretty quick into my meditation practice, my serious meditation practice. Mm -hmm. And then I, I had already been told that I had the ability to channel so I kind of, or I believed that already, or I started believing it more that, okay, I wasn't, you know, I was led to Abraham uh, on purpose. You know, it didn't just happen, you know, including the, the different people telling me about it and, and all of that. And I read The Secret also, and I didn't, I, I liked The Secret, I liked the message of it, because again, I thought I'd invented all of that stuff. <laughs> and I was watching Oprah one day, and I never watched Oprah really, and I happened to be watching it one day, and she had Rhonda on, who, um, you know, wrote The Secret. And I thought, this makes so much sense. This is exactly what I've been saying for years. I'd never really heard a lot about it you know, before that because I didn't bother to read the Abraham material, mm -hmm. which came before The Secret, of course. So just, just working at it and understanding and believing that I had the ability to do it and practicing it and enjoying the process because I'm a very type A, very impatient person. Mm -hmm. And usually if things don't click really quick for me, I move on. Uh, and this was something that I chose not to move on from, but I just chose to continue to work out. Yeah, I'm still impatient, definitely. <laughs> this is, um, that's why you know, I have that vision of you know, 300 people showing up and you know, just having fun and calling all these people up and doing all this, but I know that that's not the right way for me to do this at this point, that I'm going to be a little more chill about it than to, to, to try to jump into what Esther Hicks does. That's why I call her the Beyonce of channeling, because she's so good. She is she's so amazing, good. yeah. 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 And so light, like I think what you were saying earlier, maybe she's figured out to kind of keep it a little lighter, I guess. Yeah, yeah. For me, this like I have a sense of humor, but it doesn't come through as much with stream. They they seem very serious. Uh huh. So I would like to reach a place where there's more balance. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Abraham that. was kind of serious in the beginning too. Beginning recordings. Yeah. More serious and less. Yeah, she had that heavy accent, and yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I understand the accent. I had this sort of. Um, sort of an Indian accent in the beginning. And, and again, it's what you do to, it's part of your process to differentiate yourself, mm -hmm. you know, that this is Esther and this is Abraham and this is mm -hmm. David and this is the stream. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something that you're doing and it's not on a conscious level. And so it makes sense now to me, but for a while I didn't understand that. I understand, you know, a lot of the uh, skepticism around Abraham. I, I had to answer all of that for myself. Like Jerry's death, I discovered them 
in 2010 and he died in 2011. And you know, there was a time span where their teachings could lead one to believe that you, know, you don't ever have to die, you don't ever have to be sick. Mm -hmm. uh, and then of course he got sick and passed away very quickly and that made me question. Yeah. But I went back and read a book that Jerry was uh, very involved in. I think it was um, Money in the Law of Attraction. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the books. Um, that he was very involved in that, that was published in 2009. And I noticed in the book, the book was supposed to be about manifesting money, but he went very deep into health. So obviously, health was very much on his mind at that point. Yeah. And I think no matter what, we're all human and we're going to age. And he was, was he in his 80s, I think? You know, I didn't know that he died until I heard you say that he died. I'm like, oh my gosh, he's, I had no idea. So yeah, I to watch, that's, sure. that's the only bad thing about YouTube. Is that you don't really Is that you don't know the timeline because people take so much Abraham stuff and then stick it on their own channel. Mm -hmm. And some of them are genuinely wanting to share it. Some of them are wanting to get the revenue from the commercials that run every five minutes, you know, yeah. while you're listening, which is very annoying. <laughs> and they will uh, misrepresent it a little bit, you know, because yeah. they'll put, you know, Abraham 2018 and then Jerry's on there. Well, right. Jerry's been dead since. I had no idea. I guess, you know, yeah. I was just kind of introduced, what, in the last year or so? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's great that all of it's on YouTube and it doesn't cost you anything, uh, but I, I could see the need to control the message a little more. And of course, Esther's so huge, she doesn't have to worry about stuff like that. She just sells out you know, workshops everywhere she goes and that's, you know, that's her thing. But, um, you know, I, I don't like the idea of the misinformation getting out there, but I guess at the end of the day, even if it's misinformation or mislabeled, you're still hearing the authentic message and if it's helpful, then it's helpful. Yeah.